Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Tipsy Ghost. We are your tipsy hosts, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hey, guys. Hi. What's up? Um, We're in a beautiful lake house. house by the lake. <laughs> we're a house by the lake, lake. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lake house. Sounds like, <laughs> like a setup for a movie. Like a, like a romantic like a ho- movie? No. No, horror. Oh, okay. Horror, horror, horror movie. movie. <laughs> I'm like a house by the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, no, we're getting murdered. Because <laughs> of like Kevin by the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a movie about a, a house by the lake? There's many. I have no idea. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. I'm sure there are. But we are here in a house by the lake. I was going to say a lake house <laughs> with Sarah's family just enjoying each other because this is the first time we've been together in a month. <laughs> did you miss us? I did. Did you miss us? Well, yes. You look like you're you're doing an interview, like you're holding a mic. <laughs> yeah, so we got like I'm our a traveling one. No, let me tell her what happened. Uh oh. Okay, so I'm a responsible. One. <laughs> Dang it! I'm already. So in trouble. I brought our travel podcast gear. <laughs> travel podcast gear, <laughs> which is just the stuff that we used to use when we started, and it's these little I call them little kickstands for the yeah, microphones. They are little kickstands. And Lindsay's like, "Oh, what's like, this?" You can and kick out with your she went to adjust bing, bing. it, and the entire base broke off. No. I barely touched it to adjust it, and it just came off. I said, "What is this hot glued on?" You manhandled it. <laughs> she goes, "And you it was just four broke po- it." It was four point nine stars on Amazon. So <laughs> should we ask? Ulf? He can probably fix it tomorrow. I bet it looks like it was hot glued on. Like it barely, like I barely touched it, and it came off. I bet. I bet if we ask, I am he knows not how to fix that it. Strong. Listen, I'm not that strong. Your you hands see my are pretty muscles? strong. I don't know. <laughs> no, my hands. Those hands. What is wrong with my hands? <laughs> I think you were mad at it. <laughs> So just before we started recording, <laughs> we had an amazing moment with Lindsay. We made her do what I call now the Shania Twain challenge. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so and sorry. And it's where um, you put headphones on the person, <laughs> a.k.a. Lindsay, and you turn on a Shania Twain song and you video her singing to said song. At the top of my lungs. Right. It was While and it was drinking. As well. It was as good as I had ever imagined it would be. I'm not going to let them ever post this to social media, so you guys will just have to imagine. Truth We're be still told, working on her. We've been trying to get her to do something like this for months. Mm-hmm. Like, there's been a challenge going around for a while, <laughs> so I only did it out of formality, um, but we all know we're, mine's not the one that people want. It's you guys you. were, like, laugh crying and, like, hyping me up, so I thought I sounded really good, and I did not. When I listened back, you guys were dancing and singing with me. I thought it was really great. It I mean, was I was really great. enjoying myself. That's why I was dancing. <laughs> I was having a great time. I'm it's still having a great time. The worst <laughs> thing ever. And Boysen's like, I could at Shania right now. She would love it. I'm like, no, please don't do that to Shania. <laughs> I honestly think she would. She would love it. She, she would. Is a, she's like a sweet older sister, and she would absolutely. She would be hype the one laughing up. and hyping you up in the corner. Oh like, gosh, oh no. my god, yes, Lindsay. No, she'd be like, oh my gosh. Lindsay, no. She would not. <laughs> Let me please, reach out to her so people. Bad. No, She's supportive. Please don't ever. I'm going to reach out to her people and I'll just send her like a private pre- preview. I, no, please, <laughs> and then, please don't. A private DM. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> and then she can be, I'll be like, hey, Lindsay's really nervous about this, but I think it's excellent. Do you think it would be okay on TikTok? And she's going to be like, oh my God, yes. Can we get she a private so record good. deal? <laughs> so I'm actually being 100 percent serious <laughs> it was right now. Terrible. This is my not serious voice, but I'm very serious. <laughs> Sarah, how bad did I sound on skill? I, I can't sound serious even if I try. There's too much tequila throwing. Oh my gosh! Throwing yes. through my veins. Throwing? I said throwing. I meant flowing. <laughs> We've had quite a too bit of alcohol tequila. because we have not been together in a month. We've missed each other so much, and. We and celebrate we're at the lake. Via tequila. We're unhealthy friends, and this is what we do when we're together. <laughs> yes. We have a very toxic relationship sometimes, <laughs> and we're very no. enmeshed. And we get together, and we're like, let's drink to celebrate being together. I don't think that's toxic. It's not Tia. toxic. <laughs> what, we drink you once really a month? Mean that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Stop my it. I'm a goosh. I'm a goosh. You want to talk? I don't want to talk. <laughs> well, anyway, so that's Anyhow, what we're doing. I do have to talk. We have an episode tonight. <laughs> we do. That's why where we're here. Hello. We're discussing Welcome a place to that discuss. some of us went to. Some of us decided yeah. to prioritize family over friends. But <sighs> I guess that's fine. It's a hard. It's a hard line. <laughs> it should be a hard line. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. So we booked this place um, a few months ago, and then my family vacation came up, which I knew was going to be the same month, and. 
what are the odds that it would literally be we would be leaving the same day that this 25 percent chance <laughs> if it was in the same month <laughs> well no it was out of 31 days in july mm-hmm. but what are the odds that I would leave the same day that we were going on this time? Okay, so, don't need to rehash it. We Lindsay support you, there, but also... I cannot be there. We need to know that you support us. I do and support I, us. I'm not getting that, but it's fine. Sarah and I went <laughs> and we had a guest Listen, family comes first. Do we had they are your family. We had a guest We're your family here. now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. We are your We're family, your family now. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We did have a guest in, 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 in guest Oh my what, god! What? In guest debater. Okay, there you go. Third well, time's a charm. You got it. In guest debater. It's a hard word. To Who's be your in guest debater? Her name is Rochelle, and we know her well. How do we you know, know Rochelle? We know Rochelle well from. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you guys. <laughs> we well know Rochelle. Okay, from Doctor <laughs> Seuss. Yes, from and Belvoir. Belvoir. Winery and in, which we have been to. You guys should check out that episode. We've been if you to haven't. a few times, and this is where we met Rochelle. Yeah, and she's amazing. She, I like to call Sarah our little empath and sensitive, but she's even more sensitive and empathic than Rochelle is. That is true. And so it was um, nice to have no, her along. You said that you said that backwards. You mean Rochelle is more empathic than I am? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I knew what you meant. I know you. I know you mean she's better than me. It's fine. No, <laughs> we love Rochelle. She's great at what she does, and she's very in tune. And we're so glad she was able to join us. And we missed you, Lindsay. Um, but if I we had to have a substitute, I'm glad it was Rochelle. No, I'm glad fine. you guys got someone else to go with you. I was it was good. Happy. So, anyhow, we went to Edinburgh Manor. Edinburgh Manor in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> Thought you guys would say the name of the city there, but um, you did not. Is it a city? Scout City? There, Scout Point. There's a city. Scout Point. Fork. Scout Manor? Fork. Fork Point. Scout Fork? Middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Scout. What are you even saying? Scotchville. Scotch. 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 <laughs> Where this, is this place? This is going, it's in Scout City. It's in Monticello, Iowa. No, no, no. no. It's in... <laughs> another place jones county Iowa. no 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 it's got no. scout in there it's it's like scotch <laughs> all right do you guys know what town it was in well, it was in scout we, city we've guessed scotch point yep. scotch grove oh, it was close <laughs> you guys were Feel even like there we were so close and yet not in my defense it's in the middle of nowhere iowa close to the wisconsin border and i'm just not familiar with up there i am not either i've never been that far I feel like i was practically in canadia who is familiar with that area? Honestly, people from that is, area. It is. There's nowhere. There's no signs there's of no. life. So even though I did not get to go on this little ghost adventure with them, I still did the history on it. So here we go, guys. It's an investigation. Ghost investigation. Whatever we were, we were told. It is not a hunt. It is not a hunt. It's not a hunt. You do not hunt ghosts. Investigate. Ghosts. Because if it's true that every spirit is out there. Um, you can't hunt them. You don't have to hunt them. Yes. Um, I believe the direct quote. From who? From, Mike. we'll get there. His name is Mike. The direct quote is, if you believe that every person who's ever died has a spirit on this earth, then you will have four spirits per square foot right. on earth. I and don't so believe that. you do that. not have to hunt for ghosts. You, you Lindsay. just have to... <laughs> That we asked you, good. Lindsay. No, I'm just saying, if every single person who died, like he said, if every single person who so died, he has a point. But listen, wait, spirit, it's, wait it's, for the point, Lindsay. It's it's okay. We're not arguing okay. that he's correct. We're just saying <laughs> Sarah was being mean to me, so I felt like I had to interject. Sarah, please stop. <laughs> no, I mean I'm just saying. I mean it's a fair point. You don't have to hunt them if they're right there. That's what he's trying to say. You don't have to hunt them if there are if they are literally everywhere. But we're going. Several hours away to find them. We could investigate here, <laughs> should we? <laughs> All right. Why don't you tell us about the history? All right. Edinburgh Manor. Or Edinburgh. Or, or Edinburgh. I don't know. Or Edinburgh. No. Not Burra. that one. Burra. Edinburgh. Edinburgh Manor. I'm going to call it Edinburgh. All right. So in 1846, the county poor farm was established here, described as a, quote, comfortable retreat for the lazy, able-bodied, 
and willingly dependent applicants. That sounds like my End quote. Tinder profile. Sign me up. <laughs> the lazy, able-bodied. Swipe right. Yes. And willingly dependent. <laughs> yes, that is that describes me to a T. Oh my God, that sounds hot. Period. So basically they house the poor, the incurably insane, and the disabled. And they had people of all ranges. They had kids, they had elderly they had pretty much every single age range there. Some people would come and drop off their kids and just leave them there. So kind of like a makeshift orphanage as well. Basically, the rule on the county poor farm was if you worked, you got shelter and food provided for you. So they would farm agriculture and livestock. And this was an operation from about 1850 to 1910. Um, and during that time, there was 150 documented deaths. That is a lot of deaths for that size of a yeah. building. At least. They said there was at least 150 documented. So think which of is, undocumented deaths. Which is kind of weird because there really weren't that many like rooms, I feel like, in the house. It makes you question the um, type of care they were receiving. Very true. It didn't say anything about the type of care. Yeah. Of course Like not. what you said. They're not, but They're not going to say. You worked, you got shelter and food. But like mm-hmm. I said, these were people who were poor. And we know even in today's day and age, people who are low income don't have the access to health care like other people do and suffer I d- I because of that. I doubt they were given great health care. I doubt they even had the health care in yeah. 1850 then. But I'm just mm-hmm. saying people aren't going to the doctor. Well, and it's extremely rural. Right. Right. Extremely rural. That's a good point. So in 1910, the poor farm was closed and it was demolished. And then Edinburgh Manor was built. And it took about a year, two years to construct. And in 1911, it opened up to house, quote, the incurably insane. So there's that word again. I don't know why they keep saying incurably insane. I don't like that word. Though. But remember, that was like, you know, pre-current day mental yes, health treatment. Yes, pre-mental health. I get didn't it. didn't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I get you're saying, it does sound like like they kind of gave up on like them. Like they just put them in a house out of, yes. out of mind. Yes. I they understand. absolutely did. It was like they didn't know That's what to exactly do with what them. they did. Yeah. They brought them there. Yeah. Um. So incurably insane, the poor and the elderly. So Aww. kind of the outcasts of society are going here is what I'm gathering. I see. Um, And this place was in operation from 1911 until November 2010. Super recent, I feel like. It is. It is very recent. This kind of reminds me of like Malvern, which was open until recently too. True. When we went there. Also in Iowa. Yes. So because this was vacated in 2010, there are still Mm -hmm. medical documents there and personal belongings. That is true. That were left there. So I was hoping you guys could fill in the blanks there. Did you guys see stuff? Yes. In the basement, um, there is a room that has a bunch of medical documents. I think they did a pretty good job of like... Like HIPAA stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Of HIPAA stuff. But truthfully, I feel like if you like spent the time to Mm -hmm. look through every single box, you could probably find something. But nobody cares that much. If it wasn't pitch black out, we could probably have found something. But also, we don't care. We Did you see, looking. like, personal items or anything like that? Um, in this room, no. It, it was, was truly, like, boxes. Storage. Yeah, it was boxes of paper um, yeah. from, I'm assuming, when it was, what, a- an asylum? Is that what you would say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, asylum? incurably insane, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it, it, I'm assuming it was documents from when it was an asylum. Okay. And Boydston did a raffle for us down in the basement. I did. They had a um, bingo wheel, which yeah. I love bingo and I like wheels. And so I yeah. spun it. Yeah. And I like wheels. And guess, guess what turned up? <laughs> so it was weird. a surprise. Wait, Lindsay, listen, sorry. it was a big surprise. So here's guess what I won. set the stage. Okay. I was, I've, I've seen the TikTok, but okay. yeah. I no, was, sh- I was spinning surprised. the wheel, spinning the bingo wheel. Yes. Spin, what do I get? Spin, what do I get? I can't wait. Ball comes Tell me. down. Ball comes down. B39. I can't wait. I, I can't wait to win. What does it say? What did I get? You're a bitch. I knew it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm still stuck on that. I like bingo. I like wheels. <laughs> it was all perfect. Yes. I also like wheels on my car. <laughs> it's a good shape. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, gets it was amazing. It I was know, hilarious. Sure the, is. <laughs> the best TikTok ever because I didn't realize you could hear her saying, You're a bitch. <laughs> and it made it that much better. You sent it to me and I was like, what are they doing there? <laughs> <laughs> we were in the basement at that time. Okay. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Just uh, but as far as other personal belongings, um, 
There was another storage area down there that maybe had some other clothing. But, but like the rooms didn't have stuff left behind. So there was. Like beds can, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to that stuff, I think. But okay. There were um, a couple spirits that were noted there. Susie, which is a child spirit who was dropped off and left behind as a kid by her parents. She reportedly moves toys in her room and has been heard singing. And then another spirit called the Joker which I'm sure you guys are going to talk about a little bit. And our friend Zach was there. Yes, he was. I have not actually probably seen this episode in a long time, so I'm not very good about Lucky for you, we caught up on it. We did. Recently. <laughs> Zach was there, and he obviously gave a very brief uh, background. I was kind of surprised to hear like how little he had to say about the, the area, but I feel like you gave more than Zach did. <laughs> In your face, Zach. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please don't antagonize Zach. He he will antagonize back. I can take it. Okay. I don't think you can. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Zach. I would probably cry. Well, so he had sent um another girl up there. I think she was like a local paranormal investigator. And she went up to one of the upstairs room. And he left her up there by herself. Of course he did. Because he That's is what like he does. Boydston. Yes. And um, she was up there. She seemed to be doing okay, I feel like. I know and that then, was like a, a dig, but I, I'm going to take her, that as a compliment. <laughs> you send me off on my own all the time. Okay, so it's – wait, stop right there. I have a question because in yes. the car I wanted to ask and then I thought, no, nay, I will wait till we're together. So. Nary a thought. <laughs> Nary a Stop thought. it right there. <laughs> nay. <laughs> <laughs> if we were ghost adventures. Yes. Who would you be? Um – Billy. Hmm. Interesting thought. <laughs> I don't know why I sounded so animated about Sarah, it. Sarah would be Zach. I know you're going to be Zach 100%. Zach. <laughs> Lindsay, I'm not 100% sure because she doesn't freak out a whole she, lot. She's an Aaron, though. I was thinking Aaron, but I don't freak out like Aaron does. Right. Maybe Nick? Mm. Nick seems kind of like the chill one of the group before he left. No, no, no. I think she might be Billy and you're going to be, um, you're Jay. Jay is kind of chill. Because I'm the technical person. And very chill and like... Takes a lot to yes. ruffle his feathers. <laughs> I, I 100% think that you're Jay. You're probably more like Billy. I'm probably more like Billy. I don't feel like I resonate with Aaron other than I get sent off by myself. Can I be a combo of Aaron and Zach? You could be Aaron and Zach. And here's the reason why I like to send you off by yourself. And I've said this before. Have, it's because I, I want you to have your own experience that you're looking for. And I say it, and, like, it doesn't bother me to go off on my own at all. I just like to point it out that boys will be like, I'm getting a bad vibe here. Lindsay, you want to go investigate that being by said, yourself? Like, you <laughs> like, do sure. like to, like, call out your inner Zach. Come on, demons. I mm-hmm. like to try to antagonize. I do. Are you Aaron? And are you I Zach? Am not, don't you dare call me Zach ever again. Wait, so is that an insult? Are you calling me Zach I as an insult? I am not a hardcore. So she can be Zach, but you can't be Zach? <laughs> no, I said she's a combination of Zach and Aaron. <laughs> That's not Zarin. what with. Zarin. Okay, I'll take it. I am extreme. Okay, I get it. Air Anyhow, I, I thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd ask that because it would be an interesting topic. And it was. I appreciate it. All right, so what did Zach find while he was there? That's what I said. Um, really, not much. Joker in the basement. Yeah, he focused on... But no, I don't. I don't know if it was his intent, but kind of the negative, like sort of, kind of harmful yeah. energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So tell me a little bit about the Joker because I tried to find stuff online and couldn't really find anything. So do you want to start in the basement then? Let's, Let's start, start in there. the basement. Start where you guys want. Yeah. So just um, real quick, there's it's a piece of land. There's a barn. There's a, a house, and then there's the manor, yeah. and it's got and a porta potty. It's got a lovely porta potty. It actually <laughs> smelled really good. Ew. It was like it was delightful. It was like it had. Don't ever call a porta potty delightful ever I will. again. Well, if you went there, you'd understand, you Lindsay. Weren't there? Don't so judge. You can't talk on it. I felt judgy yeah. against porta potties. I'm so sorry, porta potties. Yes. So there's there's yeah there's a basement, a first floor, or ground floor, whatever you want to call it, and then there's a second floor. So we're gonna start in the basement. Yep. And the Which, basement's sidebar. How big is this place? I got the impression it was very big. It's rather large. You know, it's, it's the girthy. size of a commuter to like commuter. Are <laughs> big or is it just one building? It's one building. Okay. So like Malvern big because that was like ten thousand square feet. Yes, I would say like Malvern big. Okay. I think it's larger than Malvern. It may it may be, but like not like. 
it's not significantly larger yeah. in terms of square feet. Okay. The way so, it's like laid out is probably about the same. It's kind of an eye. So you have your main hallway, hallway yeah. and then two yeah. hallways off to the at the ends of the main hallway. It's shaped like a really old hospital. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. like a community hospital. That's how I would describe it. The basement though has lots of weird intertwining rooms yeah. and we went down to the basement as a group the first time we were down there uh again it was in a group setting and they were showing us the dowsing rods and our friend rochelle and myself we are water witches we love the dowsing rods and for those who didn't bring their own the whole group got get, got dowsing rods and yes. <laughs> initially we were trying to ask questions as a group but eventually it turned into like our own dowsing rod session and Rochelle and I was we're talking about this later and it's like if if I'm asking my own question and then I'm really close to Sarah who's asking an, yet another question of her own that's a good point who who is it responding to is it responding to me is it responding to her do I get my own spirit my personal spirit responding to me mm-hmm. and so while we were all trying the dowsing rods I guess that's my only criticism is i wish we were all asking the same questions yeah to kind of um confirm the validity of the dowsing rods yeah that's a good point because if there's say one spirit down in that room and there's 30 people asking different questions someone's going to get a response but yeah Yeah, sure right only one person might get a response that's accurate and the other 28 people or is all just them feeding into it yes so while we were doing the dowsing rods, um, they were also running the spirit box. So they gave us like an individual time to ask questions. And then they started doing like a group session, which was better, I feel like, than the individual time for the dowsing rod responses. And they were running a spirit box over a mic or a, a speaker at the time and um, asking questions. And we kept getting the response, Doug or Dave coming through down in the basement from the spirit box yes and also baby or baby nobody could tell but then um we also thought we heard betty and that was significant because that is rochelle's mom's name so they were hearing betty over and over and over and rochelle was asking questions during this session like do you know me and you would hear things like yes i do so interesting Yes. Okay. That that was the most significant I got from the recording down there. Okay. So after we did the dowsing rods, we kind of went off and explored a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just some side rooms, lots of storage, that type of stuff. Sure. And then later on when we came down, we went to the boiler room. Yes. And the boiler room is said to house, well, I think the whole place houses the Joker, but the boiler room is where we were told that the Joker mostly stays. Right. Is this like a malicious spirit? Yeah, he's so he's said to be kind of like a dark energy. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a nice name, but that's because of Batman. Right. True. I think <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably why. But <laughs> so we're really not sure any history on the Joker. Okay. We don't know. We were just told like this is kind of a more malicious, malevolent type of spirit. And so later on, we went down to the boiler room and we had just a quick little session yeah did you yep. hear anything from that? i did so i got that recording and literally as soon as you started recording you were like boyson always says we're in the boiler room this is what's going yeah. on yeah. so she said we're in the boiler room and my feet hurt uh, thank you for reminding me so yes. it, like i said it's kind of a maze down there and as you turn the corner it's this giant room with um I don't know, industrial laundry, those types of things. And then you have to go into a, yet another room and yeah. then down some stairs into yeah. the boiler room. So lots of walking. Well, oh. well, I mean, yeah, but not any more than Normal. other places we've yeah, been to. Sure. But so I was fine. I didn't feel anything physically. But whenever I got to like the laundry, I'm going to call it the laundry room, but really it's okay. much more than that. I am heading towards the boiler room. I felt the most excruciating foot pain I've ever felt. And so that's, I mean, that's what I was feeling. And I just kept complaining about it because it was really bizarre. It like wasn't, all over? No, it was just my feet, like the bottoms of my feet. They were kind of like burning. Hmm. Okay. Um, And then as soon as, you know, we, we stayed in the boiler room for a few minutes and then we left and my feet did not hurt after that. And mm-hmm. later on, Rochelle and I went down to the boiler room again. And again, it happened. 
Well, so it was, yeah, it was only whenever I was in that area. And so it was just very bizarre to me. So, yes, that's that a is. good thing to point out. It was literally like I put zero, zero, zero for the time because it was as soon as you started recording. You said, my feet hurt. So it was right when you guys got there. Um, there is a lot of knocking that's going on, and a lot of it was on command. Like, Rochelle would ask for a noise for a knock because you guys would hear a knock. Rochelle would say, can you make that knock again so we know it's you? And you would hear a knock again right away. You guys were kind of debating amongst yourselves whether this was something upstairs. And there are points during the recording where I can hear people upstairs and I can hear people kind of moving around Mm -hmm. or whispering. The knocks didn't really seem like that. They very clearly sounded like knocks, which I think they were. I can't think think somebody would be knocking. I think we were just trying to be really, you know, (laughs) objective. (laughs) Right. Was it here? But I think. It did sound like it was in the room. Unless somebody else was in like a room nearby and was knocking every time you guys said, can you knock for me? (laughs) Which there wasn't. Because it was almost on command. Maybe like you guys would say, can you knock for me again? And there would be a knock. And they were different points in the room too. Like it wasn't always. It's not like like... people are knocking. Like I can hear the difference between a knock and a footstep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I got several instances of that. I got maybe a growl at one point. Um, There was, Which I feel like. Maybe you or Rochelle heard it. Because here's the thing. I felt nothing in, in the boiler room the entire right. night. Nothing. No, like the Joker wanted literally nothing to do with me, I guess. Which Rochelle was feeling things there. And yeah. Boydson was as well. I was not. Because you guys were saying that you were hearing it behind you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There were some other noises and you guys were debating again whether that was upstairs or not. You guys asked for it to make a noise and there were some footsteps Again, I can't tell if that's upstairs or not, Um, but it was right when you asked it to make a noise. And then there was running footsteps, and you guys were again debating whether that was people upstairs or not. That's always the tough part when you're in a group. Very fast running. Yeah. But so very uh, objective results. Mm -hmm. I will say that you guys called it out very well that it was a knocking. You guys were calling out your noises. Yep. Very well. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so that's what I got in the boiler room. Boyson yeah. had hurt feet and there was some knocking and maybe a growl. Yep. I, I didn't have a ton of experiences there, but I know that those two did. So anyhow, uh, the basement was great, but let's move up to the first floor. Okay. All right. Main floor, whatever you want to call it. So the first floor is where we started out within the group. Yep. And they told us to go and pick a room that feels right or that where you feel something right yeah. oh okay and so yeah. reaching out to the empaths got it it's exactly what they did well, i would have been like sarah where are we going yeah. <laughs> which is interesting you say that. yeah because so rochelle doesn't like to point out that you know like she's an empath or she's sensitive sure. sheila wants people to come to that conclusion on their own and then see if she kind of corroborates that that sounds like another empath that i know Huh. Isn't that weird? So we walked down one hallway and we're like, yeah, I mean, this room maybe. And then we walked down another hallway mm-hmm. and all three of us individually are like, oh, this room mm-hmm. though. And all three of you felt mm-hmm. something. Okay. Mm-hmm. What did you feel that led you to this room? I don't, I don't know what I, I don't know what I felt. I never know what I feel when we're walking through these places. It's just, well, walking, walking by a room literally and everything is open, right? Sure. Like all the doors are open and you just have the need to go, like, I want to go in there. Mm-hmm. I want to go in here. Or I don't want to go in there. It's one or the, okay, you one or the other. You feelings, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I felt like I wanted to go in there. It, was, it wasn't like, uh, I absolutely don't want to go in here and I don't want to be around these people. Like, yeah. it was fine. Um, but I was, I guess what I'm trying to say is I was drawn to this room where we initially started out. There was a couple of rooms on the first floor, like two. Are these all like patient rooms? Is that what I look like? So this room was more of like a common room where okay. they would all join together and like have, you know, activities or whatever. There was tables set up. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. I, I guess I'd call it a common room. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't ask Rochelle what drew her to that room. Um, but myself personally, as I walked by it, I felt kind of a, a heaviness on the arm in that side of the mm-hmm. chest that was on the room side. And so that kind of let me know, like, oh, or that's maybe something here. 
And so the guide asked us, you know, all, did you guys find a room that you're interested in? Yeah. And we were like, yeah, well, actually, us, we, we, we like this room. And she's like, all right, let's start here. But we all separately walked around. Like you all separately picked that room? Yeah. Mm-hmm. None of us were walking together. So gotcha. like they said, pick a room and we all walked in different directions. Yep. And, you know, we each walked around the entire first floor. And then she said, pick a room. And all three of us were like. <laughs> it was the beginning of the night too so yeah. we were trying to kind of like feel out the situation sure. and you know we don't want to be like over overly annoying like hey let's all go here right so we all said let's let's try this and we did we went in there we did and they had something called a music box and mm-hmm. it's i think it's either energy activated or motion activated and when it's activated it spins this little dial that yeah. sounds like a music box it's like this little chime that sounds very creepy it okay. is extremely creepy it's not gonna creepy. lie yep and so while we were at this point the whole group's in there and we're just trying to have a session um the the two or three guides are asking questions and then they encourage us to ask questions um, so this music box, while we were all in there asking questions, it was very responsive to yes or no. So music for yes, and then nothing for no. And it would usually just be like a short blip, like a ding or a ding, ding mm-hmm. type of music. Gosh, I hate this already. It really was creepy. And the music it plays is awful. But when it plays for a long time. Right. Which it did when it was asked, do you like that toy? And it went around for like three rotations of music. It was like, it was very adamant, yes, of a response. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, the music box was consistently going off. We maybe thought like, well, there's maybe something wrong with it. And while the music was playing, there was some audio static type interference with the Mm -hmm. recorder. Interesting. And they were using a voice-activated recorder Mm -hmm. all while this is going on. And when they played back the recorder, they got an EVP. And I'm not – they weren't sure what it said. They thought – one person thought that it said, get out. Mm, One person thought that it said, hey, it's Mm -hmm. me. Those are two very different sounding. Yeah, exactly. Well, when you're listening to a whisper, it's kind of hard to differentiate. No, sure. I get it. What you can tell is there's a whisper that nobody said in the room. (laughs) Did you catch that on your recording or was it just on theirs? Um, Just on theirs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just very interesting because I, I really, I quite enjoyed the, I, it was creepy, but I quite yeah. enjoyed the music box. Me Something too. Something new. Yeah. I kind of wish we would have used that more often yeah. throughout the night. Like we should, we should check that out or um, look into something similar. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Something yeah, for new sure. I haven't heard of. That's pretty cool. It was really cool. And just right it. off the bat, like that was our first place that we went when and we were investigating and it was very responsive. And I think to to be honest, I think that that was the most responsive of the night. Yes. In my opinion. Yeah. I felt I felt the most in that room in that moment. Yeah. That I felt the entire night. So why don't we – I'm trying to plan this out. Why don't we um, – You want to go to the back room where we did Estes? <sighs> Let's go to the children's room. Okay. okay. I have that one. And the children's room is – it's called the children's room because that's where they picked out that maybe children might have stayed. We don't know that for sure. They don't know that for sure. But it's called the children's room, and they assume that that might be where children were. Because it was like the women's and children's mm-hmm. area. Yeah. That's yeah. the room that has the toys and yes. stuff. They say. It's a large room. Yeah. yeah. It's with. currently got like three to four beds in it. At least, yeah. And lots of toys. Yeah. We all gathered as the entire group. Mm -hmm. So let's say maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 people in one room. And it was a large room. It was a little crowded, but it was still a large room. And this, the group that was leading, they wanted to start off with the human pendulum. Oh, gosh. Which it wasn't. sorry. I wasn't even there, but I'm having flashbacks to Missouri State Pen. I don't have the recording of the human pendulum. I have the recording from Estes, so. I have the memory of the human <laughs> pendulum. <laughs> I still have the memory from Missouri State Pen where, like, me so, and you were asking the most bizarre questions. Do you believe in wait, aliens? I that was too. me, first of all. All of us were asking the questions. Yes. yes. It wasn't quite <laughs> yes. to the human pendulum standards that the State Pen yeah. gave us. So here's what happened, because I did listen to the entire recording, which, number one, I thought it was extremely weird. Before they even put his headphones in, you could hear an entire Ariana Grande song playing. Mm-hmm. Which I was like, that's like weird. The recording picked it up. 
like I could hear like whatever was coming through the headphones was like I could hear the radio. Oh, weird. Okay. okay so, so I'm not, not really sure. Canceling, yeah. I'm not sure what was going on. Like if they were playing the music, if it was picking up from the radio. Sure. Because like when I did Estes, it was like, all right. So it's different. That's what I'm guessing. Do you remember them saying like Bissereth? Bickereth? Bickereth? Maybe. Bissereth method? It was some know. name I don't recognize. They I tried spelling names. it. Yeah. And I said he had headphones on. I'm not really sure. But they asked him to, when he had his headphones on, so he supposedly couldn't hear anything, they asked him to lean forward for no and lean backwards for yes. Yeah. So Boydston's hashtagging the whole time, oh. not buying it. Hashtag take me back to the boiler room. Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you being a Lindsay right now? It was, was hilarious. Hashtag not impressed. By... Oh my gosh! But I'm here's so proud why. Of you. Can I tell you why? Because they were asking pretty leading questions. So, like, oh, if there's yes. any way you can hear anything, um, and I mean, we did like the the whisper challenge tonight. So, like, you can hear a tiny bit. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what happened. So it's the point to make it so like he can't hear the question, so he's just responding. And however. supposedly his eyes are closed, yes. and he has these headphones on. So if that's the case, then you know what? He wasn't blindfolded. He was supposed he just had to eyes closed. point. He was supposed to focus on a point across the room. Oh, I thought he but was it's just probably leaning. dark where you guys are, anyways, right? Yeah, the lights were on. Oh, um, but the questions boo. were like. Lights on, boo. The questions were like, we know you know a Susie. Can you lean forward for Susie? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, I get Like, it. they were fairly leading. Um, So it was just, eh, you guys I'm not a big band. fan. So here's the problem with that type of thing. Like, my, my issue is if you put loud music on anybody, even without the music, let's call it as it is. If, if you ask anybody to just stand still and not, like, yeah, I'm gonna wobble. All. People wobble. Say wobble, wobble. And truly, wobble, it was like, did you see that? Did you see that? Like hair leaning forward. Yes. I didn't love that one. So, and wobble, I will wobble. say, you did hear like they asked a question. I don't even remember what the question was because it wasn't really significant. And there was a loud banging that we were all like, oh, that was weird that that happened. And like you guys room. were all in that room together. Yes. Right? yes. Okay. Um, and I wrote, not gonna lie, I'm over this. And ready to move on. That's what I wrote. My nose. <laughs> I feel like that's how the human pendulum works with us. Yeah, I'm not so, a fan. I mean, if we get to the point where we're hashed, where I'm hashtagging non. That's what I'm saying. I'm so proud of you. You well, were channeling your inner Lindsay. I'm the hardcore. And you were I'm using like, a personal vlog. Not gonna lie, I'm over this. I'm ready to move on. Yeah. So. So we did move on. But we did move on, yeah. And another thing that happened in the yes. children's room. Oh, okay. I didn't know if we were going to stay in the children's room. Yeah, we're going to stay there. Private. Okay. No, we're going to make it quick, though, because it's going to take forever, but I'm going to try to be fast. And I, you want to explain it? Another thing that happened in the children's room is something called the Estes Method. Right. So the Estes Method is basically where you cut off um, all like sensory from the outside world. Sure. So you put on noise canceling headphones and truly all you hear is and I have done this so I know. Like a spirit and, box. Yes. Mm, yes, but in your ears full we, blast. We did that at like we've done that at several places. No. So that's what I said mm -hmm. and it is slightly different because okay. it also puts um where well, you can't see blindfold. Blindfold. A blind blindfold. Face. But she's the only one that can hear it. It's just in her headphones. True. And so from the outside looking in, all you can hear is her spitting out words. Okay. Yes. We were introduced to the Estes Method by Samantha, and Samantha is very familiar with this method. So she was in the room, and she had her headphones on, her blindfold on, and she was just sure. like going to town, okay? So I have all of her words. Okay. And in them, she spits out a lot of words, which is random. But then all of a sudden, she says Jenna, which happens to be one of the leaders. And Jenna is a leader from Kansas City, which I thought was interesting. Wow. And then she said, there might be a child. And then she says, I threw up. I miss home. Old man. Oh, I miss home. That makes me sad. Yeah. And then she also says, Mike and Samantha. Now, that may be leading because obviously that's her husband and her name. Um, but she also says, do I look like Linda? Linda happens to be Mike's ex-wife. Oh, okay. I was thinking of myself. Also, she would know that. <laughs> so that seems a little like, mm, okay, yeah. maybe. But there is a deep voice when she growls and says, Eddie. And I don't know who Eddie is, but she says Mike multiple times. 
So whether it's Mike him or Mike, there's another Mike in the room. Sure. Okay? okay. And then she says, Susie is laughing and I'm 10 and Ruby 12. And Susie's the name of the child ghost. Yes. Supposedly. Supposedly, Supposedly yeah. And then she also says, somebody touched her head and she says, get ready, Estes. Hmm. And then there's this weird thing that happens with the countdown situation. He starts counting down, then she starts counting down. And supposedly she can't hear him, but he'll stay he'll say eight and she'll go, seven, six, five. So here's what I'll say about that. Yeah. And while I I am intrigued by the Estes method. I agree, but I'm questioning. Here's my problem is right before he started counting down, he turned a flashlight on. And the, the uh, blindfold wasn't, you know. You'd be able to see the flashlight. The yeah. Yeah. I feel like it was lead, leading. For sure. Um, so, you know. And I, don't, I honestly, I truly do not mean to dog on the Estes method. No, I don't. I, just, I would have liked to try it, to have tried it myself. I um, wish it wasn't like a big demonstration first, maybe. Yes. And then I would have been like super thrilled to try it, which we did try it. So I kind of want to get out of the children's room. How do you feel about that? So there was another room in the front that you guys also called the children's room mm-hmm. where you guys had some experiences there. A few minutes into this, you guys are talking about feeling a negative energy there. Sarah, you especially were feeling a negative energy and says that you saw a sexual assault that occurred there. Um, Boydston, you saw a green. I hate that for me. Yeah. Thanks. And you guys were talking to the spirit. You were, you know, just saying, I'm sorry that this happened to you, all of this. Huh. Boydston, at one point, you saw a green glowing light at the exact same time that Rochelle felt cold air behind her. And you saw the green glowing light behind her. And then she said, it's really cold right here. <laughs> um, You felt touched on the arm a few minutes, not even a few minutes, like 30 seconds after that. And then 30 seconds after that, you said that they were holding your hand. That room was honestly like a whirlwind. And honestly, we were so far apart from each other. I couldn't even hear what you were saying. Right. So it's funny that you say all these things because she was like, like the room was bigger than the room we're in now. So yeah. I... And we were probably like talking at this level. I could not hear anything you were saying. I can barely hear what we're saying now. So the fact, the fact that we were all saying things like, you know, mm-hmm. fairly significant to each other, that was interesting. Yeah. And you guys were all having experiences. Yeah. Sarah, you saw a shadow in the corner mm-hmm. moving. Mm-hmm. You guys eventually pulled out the dowsing rods and you, Rochelle, I think Rochelle had them and she was saying, point to the person in this room who is only a mom and it pointed to you, Sarah. Mm-hmm. And she was like, would ask questions, point to this person who has this, and it would point to that person mm-hmm. every single time. Um, to you, Boydson, to Rochelle, to Sarah. Yeah. No matter what the question was, it was, like, accurately answering it. Yeah. Interesting. So that was in another children's room off the first floor. Yeah. We stayed on the first floor. Do you want to talk about your this method? Uh, yes. So I actually tried to fall asleep multiple times throughout this night. <laughs> <laughs> she did. As she does. But I made friends with our guide. And and our guide and Boydston and Rochelle came to wake me up. And they were like, absolutely not. You need to get up and come with me to try this Estes method. And I'm so glad that they did because it was an interesting experience. So, so they woke you up to do this? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I wasn't quite asleep, but I had... I was headed to bed, and we know, we know how that goes. Yes. You were checked out. I was done. Um, so it was fine. They they came, they got me, and I was in a sleep state when I went in to do my Estes method. It was in basically a closet because I, I feel like I may have picked out this room for you, them. You did. Yeah. So remember how I said, like, we were picking out rooms at the yes. beginning? You picked out two. This was the second room. Yes, I did. And I got the joy of listening to this. And I didn't Sorry. know what the SS method was when I got this. <laughs> and I was listening to it. Um, and I saw Sarah – or I saw Boyson at work. And I said, what is – like, you guys just say Sarah Estes. And she was oh, like, yeah. um, it's the SS method. I don't want to explain too much about it. Just listen. So, again, <laughs> and now that we've talked about it, you kind of know what it is. But, like, basically I had these noise-canceling headphones on, and it was like a spirit box in my ears. Full blast. I could yeah. not hear anything. And I had a blindfold on. So I could not – I literally could not see anything. I couldn't hear anything but that. And I don't even think I spoke until a few minutes into it. You didn't speak very much, honestly. Because um, it's it's – Other people were. 
it's a little overstimulating it, it, in a weird way. It's like it takes away all your senses, yeah, but yeah. honestly, it hyper focuses on just that. And then you're just like, whoa. And then you feel like you hear a lot of things. So I was trying really hard to only say the things that I actually heard. Sure. So I, I don't even know what I said. Well, and I, I appreciate that. Can Thank I you. set the stage? Yeah. Yes, so set the stage. We're in this I room. I want to be there. Yes, I'm there. We're in a room. It's got like a couch. <laughs> it's a, a closet. Chair, <laughs> okay, and couch. There's yes. several people. And then several. off this room is a closet. Okay. It's closet. like a, a large walk in closet. I mean, yeah. Okay. It's nice. Closet. Spacious. Got it. Um, <laughs> and cheers. so here, so Sarah and our Carrie, our, Carrie, yeah. our friend that Sarah made, um, they were sitting across from each other, probably about. As far as you and I are. And Carrie was doing the SS method as well. Both doing the SS method as well as somebody in the room adjoining. Right. And which I couldn't hear her as well. I could hear Carrie and Sarah because I'm assuming the recorder was right by them. So to be there in person, it was like you've got three people yelling at you. Yes. And sorry, I try not to yell. No, you were not yelling. It's so funny because you feel like other people were like, blue. So I'm just going to Yellow. read a few <laughs> highlights from the 30 minutes of this that I had Sorry. to listen to. No, it's it. I know, I know, I know, I know it's not me. Um, Sarah, at one point you did yell out "yes" really loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop apologizing. <laughs> She's um, not sorry. Other, I'm not sorry, but it is weird. Other things that were yelled out. Everyone's looking at you. She's trying hard. I said those things. This is between you and Carrie and whoever the other girl was. I don't know her name. Karen, woohoo. Where are my meds? Fuck off. I didn't say those things. Bitch, give me my meds. I did not say that. No, this was not you, but at this point, somebody was like, oh, we got some nurses here. I think that was Rochelle was like, we got some nurses here, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Nobody here cares. David, stupid, you are. Smorgasbord. I didn't hear smorgasbord. I thought that was kind of interesting. That's a random word that has, you know, ties to us. Everybody loves the 90s. I was like, what in the world? I mean, that is true. I do love the 90s. (laughs) I do love the 90s, but that's not something I think a ghost would say. (laughs) I hate all these people. I'm horny. Get down. The thing is, is it, it, there, (laughs) I was like, I will say there is a lot coming at at, in my ears. (laughs) That sounds weird, but there is a lot of noise in, in this. But were you picking up like whole phrases and sentences like some of these people were? Maybe, but like, I. Like everybody loves the 90s. I don't, I never clearly heard a sentence. That just seemed unrealistic to me. And I feel like I'm like fairly in touch with things and I was able to like hear some things. Sure. I don't know if they made sense or not. I have no idea what anybody was asking. You shouted out words every now and then, but it was like one or two words at a time, not like whole sentences. Because I was trying to to say things that were only like significantly coming across. No, and I appreciate that. Like, I don't want you to feed into it. Like, I feel like some people feed into this and they start interpreting what they think they want to hear versus like actually listening and trying to be objective and say like what you're hearing. I'm interested to hear what you remember from it because I know it was towards the end of the night. You were sleepy. Very. You went to bed almost right after. Yeah. And so I didn't really get a chance to be like, what actually happened? Like, what were you hearing? So it, it was extremely bizarre because the, the noise canceling headphones trip you out after a while like no matter what you're doing like if you're listening to music or whatever but like the fact that you just get so engulfed in what you're listening to is weird after yeah. a while so the fact that you're just like hearing yeah over and over it's almost like a mind fuck because yeah. you're like holy shit this is this is all i can hear so like after 10 minutes of it i almost think you need to go for like a full hour i know that sounds extreme but like it took me a good 15, 20 minutes to finally be able to, like, pick out. Yes. Yeah. Because I didn't want to holler every single thing I'm hearing because I'm like, oh, my gosh. I appreciate that. What the hell? Yeah. There's, like, so – I think I even said – I think I said multiple times. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I hear a lot of things. Or there's so many you, people. You were saying there's a lot. I, I can't. I can't make it out. Yeah. Like, there's too many people. Like You were saying that a lot. And that I just couldn't. I couldn't understand, like, too many people were yeah, talking to me at once. So it's, like, almost like you need to get through that. And then you can – and then towards the end, I was able to start saying, like, a few things here and there. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to try on our own. But we'd have to do, like, Spirit Box 
in the headphones and the blindfold. blindfold. I have a sleep mask. Which I, That's I mean, all it is, I, really. I do want to try it on her own. Yeah. I totally agree. That's really all. I mean, we don't need any fancy stuff. Yeah. You just need noise-canceling headphones. The only thing I will say is, you know, I set the stage. There's three people doing it in close proximity. Yeah. It's the same, you know, thing that I said about the dowsing rods. I people were throwing out questions, and it was like I couldn't tell what was an answer true. to what. And who true that, and I couldn't, I couldn't hear, I will say, I could not hear anything like if you were talking i could not hear any questions yeah i couldn't hear carrie across from me mm-hmm. i couldn't hear anybody in the other room there was no way i was hearing anybody so but i mean we've done we've heard the spirit box all in person like yeah it it picks up on radio waves exactly yeah. that's and exactly so, what it sounds like well so, you can try and make sense of what's coming out i think right. at least pieces of it are coming from radio stations around i totally agree and that's why i did not yeah. like holler out every little thing that i heard because i'm trying to make out like is this just yeah like i'm and I'm, this is where some of my skepticism came in because we've all heard the spirit box with the right. radio stations i have never heard like three sentences. sentences back to back to back and they were yelling out sentences back to back to back and i was like you might get a word every now and then maybe two to three phrases which is why I was trying to only say what I heard. Right. So I'm gl- I'm glad that that came across. I was really trying hard not to holler. And <laughs> they did play a game during this about guess the p word, and they picked a word pineapple. Yeah. And um, they were trying to again, like you said, you guys can't hear them, Mm-mm. and they were trying to get one of them to guess what the p word was, and somebody did yell out pineapple, which was the p word. So Do you know which one? I don't. It I was when it was Rochelle the person in the other room. Yeah, it was when Rochelle oh. was listening, so you weren't listening at that point. Okay. And I don't I really don't want to like be a big naysayer no. on the SS method. I think that there's something to it. I do I, I appreciate we just don't the, know like, taking it, out the extra sensory stuff. Like I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um but um maybe I don't know what. Maybe just try one person at yes. a time. Right. I think that would be a good idea. And, and I also want to point out that Boyson put at one point that she wanted tater tots. She uh, said it to the recording. Obviously. I still want tater tots. Because <laughs> we were like, nowhere near tater tots. I want tater tots too, Boyston. <laughs> All right. So that's what we got. And thank you for making me relive the Estes method. Sorry. Really? Uh, no, it's fine. I had to listen to 30 minutes of this random people shouting out things. I was like, what is happening here? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm just really, I'm really proud of myself. I, I was very proud of you. You did really good. The Thank only you. other thing that happened on the first floor is that we slept there. True. And um, it was hot as fuck down there. Yes. Which is interesting because it wasn't hot during the day, but it was hot at night. And we slept under the creepiest ceiling of life. Like literally the entire thing was falling on to our faces. Sometimes I sleep with my mouth open. And so I was <laughs> like, there's something that's going to fall <laughs> on my mouth. I just know it. Uninvited things in your mouth. It's just not, not ever mouth. pleasant. Can you never, ever say uninvited things in your mouth ever again? No. That is exactly what it was. Do you like I slept on my side things in your mouth? Gross. I turned on my side because of that. Because um, I don't. <laughs> there were things dangling from the ceiling. Okay. We also slept by the door that exited towards the potty, porta potty, potty potty, potty potty, <laughs> and that was rough. So. And how was that? Um. Well, well, I just saw some people going in and out. Ah, uh, yeah. You wouldn't think that, but there we were. Well, some people didn't <laughs> sleep, right? All right. So, some people some stayed people up, were all up all night. I mean, well, that's fine. More power to them. But I we mean, didn't I plan could that be, out, right? But normally on ghost hunts, we Listen, try to get. I, some sleep. I'm never up all night. Especially I am ready we have for to drive bed. back. Yeah. But, do you want to go to the drive. second floor? Let's move it. Sure. I didn't get any audio there, so this is all you guys. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Where I got start? one that was a spirit box, but it didn't say where it was. So I don't know where that is. So the second floor, we went to the same corner room that we were in in the children's room in the first floor, okay. but it was just a floor up. Okay. And this is where we met Mike. And Mike is a very endearing older gentleman. Mm-hmm. He A spirit or an actual No, person? he's an actual person. He's okay. Samantha's actual person. husband. Samantha's husband. Okay. And he's a guide. He, oh, yes. He you know how I love me some old people. You love Call old people. He's going to be offended. He wasn't super old, but it's Mike. And but it's Mike. I, I <laughs> loved him. He had so many stories. He yeah. had. He was the one who talked to us about not calling it ghost hunting. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, he was just a, a sweet, a sweet man. Wise beyond his years. Wise beyond his years. And so this is where 
when we initially walked in, the REM pod was going off Mm -hmm. and it kept going off. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, he told us to go off and meditate into a room. So we were all on the second floor. He's like, go pick a room, something that feels right to you and meditate. Oh, Um, okay. He's like, you need to set intentions about making contact and as he was saying that, the REM pod went off again, and he's like, you just need to go in there and not think like, oh, I want to make contact with the ghost. He's like, just set intentions. Just be like, yeah. just take three deep breaths. You know, he went through the whole thing. Okay. And so yeah, we did. Which I appreciate. Definitely. Yeah. And so we did that, and then we all came back, and I had the audio from that, and there was a loud, a loud fan on, and I didn't hear anything. So when we came back. Like, because the fan was blocking it out? Yep. Yeah, okay. He talked about, he went on a little bit more about these intentions. Mm-hmm. And apparently yeah. there is a man named Edward Russell. He was saying, he said that this is where he read about that intentions have weight. And there was an experiment done in the 30s okay. with three plant trays. And I want you to just hear me out. Okay. I'm listening. So. <laughs> I don't like it when you. You know, try to give me a guideline there. Just listen. Like, you know that I'm going to shoot it down. Three trays of plants. Okay. And the first tray of plants, they just grew following the guidelines. Like, so however many inches deep, (laughs) water it, use sunlight. Okay. Did you really just giggle at inches deep? Absolutely. (laughs) So follow directions. (laughs) Set aside. Okay. And then... The second plant tray, follow directions as before, and then bombard it. They said that they brought in people to just bombard the plants with negative thoughts. Okay. Like, you're an ugly plant. You're never going to grow. Those types of things. Aww. And Poor then plant. The third tray, follow directions as above, and then send positive thoughts and positive intentions. Like, you're going to grow up to be a beautiful plant. You're the best plant you're ever. You're the best. Yeah, those types of things. And so in this you. experiment. You're big, you're strong. <laughs> in this experiment, the first tray with just general instructions, it grew normally. Uh-huh. Didn't do, didn't exceed anything. It just grew. It was average. The second tray. <laughs> I feel that plant. <laughs> It's my life. <laughs> the second tray, which was my life. <laughs> follow directions but bombarded with negative thoughts. Yes. That's yes. me. Only half of them germinated. And the ones that did, they were it small. a lot. Yeah. So. I, I'm, I'm there. I'm in the half germinated life. Okay. So the- <laughs> and I can't with her. <laughs> the third tray. Yes. The positive reinforcement. thoughts. 90% of them grew, and those that grew grew taller than predicted. There's a lot of psychology out there with plants and talking to them, playing music for them. Yeah, I'm on board with this. Yep. I get it. And so he was talking about that with intentions. Okay. Which this with is ghosts? my uh, explanation of Mike. He was just such an endearing guy, and he had a, so many ex- so many examples of these types of things. Mm-hmm. And that's Mike. Okay, um, Mike. The Boys only other fan thing of you. that went off were, again, these voice-activated recorders. So we did a, a a recording session, and he got an EVP. Okay. Were you guys up there with just him, or was it like a group of people? It was him. It was our group, so gotcha. our smaller group. Gotcha. Okay. With him and, and another guy. Not the whole group. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, we did like – this was when we did the Circle of Trust. Oh. oh go ahead. The okay. circle of trust. Kind of- After he, we, he did his explanation of Edward Russell and the intentions, he, what happened? He also talked about his equipment a little bit, and he mentioned his thermal camera. And he spoke yes. about a uh, picture that he got of Samantha, and there was an angel behind Samantha. Do you remember this? Samantha's his I, wife, who's yes. the other leader. Okay, I do gotcha. remember this, and here's yeah. why. Yeah. So Rochelle, the girl that we were with. Yeah. She said that when we all walked into the room, yep. she saw this bright light, which she interpreted as an angel, come up over us and then just proceed on. And she's like, it didn't feel weird. It didn't feel unsafe. She's like, I felt totally self. I felt safe. I felt really warm. Mm-hmm. I felt just comfortable. And that's why she thinks it was an angel, which is interesting because in that same room is when he talked about. He did talk about it there. He couldn't recall if the picture was taken there, but he did talk about it there. So it was interesting. And he did show us the picture. 
later. And what are your thoughts upon seeing the picture? So the picture itself shows like a darker image, I would say. But darker in thermal, I think, is colder. I, I'm not, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. So, I, I mean, I don't know what the... I feel like, yes, brighter on thermal means warmer heat. Yeah. So, um, anyways, he gave us he gave us some of the equipment during that time, and we did the circle of trust. And then we asked all the same question as you do in the circle of trust. If you're not familiar with that, you ask the same question um, all in a circle. Yep. And you pass around the recorder, and their certain recorder only responds to uh, if there is... A voice. Yeah, if so, there's something to pick up on. If there is no request, if if there's no voice, you just hear the same question over and over and over, like back to back to back. Right. Um, however, there is a recording um, after we say, please tell me your name. And it's right in the beginning. And I don't know who's speaking, but it's after the first one or two says, please tell me your name. And you, you can very clearly he- hear somebody say hi or Mike. And then the recorder stopped working at the end of that specific session, which I'm not like a huge fan of um, the circle of trust. I don't know why. It just bothers me to like. I don't think any of us are. I know we aren't, but you know what I mean? Like to be sitting in in a row. Anyways, that's all I got on that recording. Where else did you guys go upstairs? Um, So honestly, whenever we went off to meditate, we kind of wandered, but that we didn't ever go back upstairs. Okay. You no, guys we really weren't didn't. getting a lot of feelings I, I feel up there. like we should have gone back upstairs, but we we didn't. We went yeah. back downstairs to the boiler room for the most part. But um, when asked if we had any feelings up there, like they asked during one of the sessions, did anybody feel anything up here? Like if you do, go out and check it out. And sure. I think all three of us said the stairwell, which was significant because we didn't know it at the time, but apparently that is where most – people feel that there is a presence or an energy like in the staircase in the staircase and what did you guys feel in the stairwell just truthfully when i feel it it's just that i want to be there i i, I don't know why yeah. i feel the tingling sensation the stroke and then i want to be there that my stroke like symptoms and that's that's it i haven't honed in on my <laughs> my feelings yet when we talked about the circle of trust again um there is a whisper that says hey I love you. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Anything else that you guys felt like you want to share about Edinburgh? The main the main thing is that we left there feeling like we wanted to come back on our own private investigation. Yeah. Definitely like a positive experience. Yeah. I think that if we were provided more time before we were we got sleepy and wanted to go back yeah, to bed, sure, to go out and and investigate on our own, I think that we might have come away with maybe a few more things. Yeah, okay. um, I get that. It's hard in big groups, and totally. you know, no no fault to the group that was leading. Absolutely not. I I feel like they were trying to help us experience things and with maybe newer investigators that would have been great yeah we're you get all levels yeah on these to be fair they they said many times like you can go off but like i felt like it was to the best interest to like stay with the group right um so now we know it's fine and yeah we would love to come back and investigate as a private group yeah, and I asked Rochelle what she thought, and she said, I do believe there's a lot of rich history with a lot of true paranormal possibilities. Just not sure that we experienced anything extraordinary, which I, I think that, you know, you and I would yeah. agree with. And those are kind of her takeaways. I think ours are pretty similar. I would agree. Like an experience here and there, but overall, like, you know, um, I just, I think it'd be best if we could go back and try again. On our own. It was yeah. a great, like, first-time experience. Like, yeah. we got a lot of history and um, introduction to... Yeah, and now we can go do our own yeah. personal. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Pick it up. I would love for you to come back with us. I would love to go there. Let's, yeah. <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's go back. Just okay. go through <laughs> Let's do it. What is your Sarah rating of approval on this place? Um, I think that... At the very least, there's residual energy. I, I think it's That's got potential to have something kind of concrete. Yeah. I'd just like to see what it's like whenever we're there without a big group. 
Yeah. Okay. Definitely residual haunting. Um, I think it could be even more active with uh, a smaller group. Yeah. So it'd be super fun to go back. And we had a great time, though. So can't wait to go back. And apparently Boyson made a new friend with a guy named Mike. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not friends. I just am a fan. <laughs> okay. She's a fan. <laughs> He's famous. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in this week to our paranormal investigation of Edinburgh Manor. You can always catch us at thetipsyghost.com and find our socials from there. Or send us an email at thetipsyghost at gmail.com. Please give us a five-star rating and a great review anywhere you listen to any podcast. We would greatly appreciate it. Yes, we would. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in this week. We will catch you guys next week. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.